The United States is one of the world leaders in the development of military helicopters, with various models that have stood out both for their effectiveness and for their presence in historical world events. Today we will talk about one of those helicopters, the Tsiolkovsky 53 Sea Stallion and its derivatives, a rotary wing monster that, in fact, appeared in a Transformers movie. Among all its wonderful features, we see a peculiarity that impresses at first its tilted tail. Have you ever wondered why this helicopter has its tail shaped this way? In this video, we will talk about this feature and why not tell the story of this incredible helicopter. The Cold War would begin in the 50s. The United States was the world's superpower, with the most powerful military, the largest economy, and virtually no opposition. To remain leaders, they needed to be at the cutting edge. In helicopters, the Soviets were somewhat lacking. But in the mid-50s, the Americans would receive intelligence revealing Soviet projects where they were working on the development of helicopters. Among them, one project stood out from the rest, where the Soviets were working to create the ultimate multi-purpose helicopter. They didn't know it, but from this project would emerge the Mil Mi-8, which in the future would be the best helicopter in its category in all of history. So it wasn't time to relax? The United States would increase the budget for the development of this type of aircraft, creating a bunch of programs and experimental helicopters for different roles. In the 60s, from that sea of experimental programs, the Heavy Experimental Helicopter Program, or Heavy Experimental Helicopter, would emerge, which sought to replace the not-so-old but already outdated HR-2S that were used for cargo transport. The Navy needed a helicopter that could carry heavy cargo directly to ships and wherever it was needed. The specifications required were a bit outrageous for the time. 3.6 tons of cargo, maximum speed of 280 kilometers and a range of 200 kilometers and it had to be able to be armed for assault transport missions. In conclusion, it had to be faster and lighter than existing helicopters, and it also had to combine several types of helicopters into one. The Navy had already had bad experiences in the 60s with the failure of the vertical takeoff and landing program, and they were desperate for this program to go well. To meet this need, Boeing offered a modified version of the early CH-47. Chinook Kaman aircraft offered a development of the British composite helicopter Farley Rothedane. And finally, Tsiolkovsky offered a chimera between their best models. Basically, a scaled version of the S61R with two General Electric turboshaft engines and the dynamic system of the S64. They called it the ICH 53A. The English proposal from Rotterdam quickly died for obvious reasons while the modified Chinook and the Tsiolkovsky fought hard to take the contract. The Chinook was not as adapted to the task as the Tsiolkovsky, but it was already in mass production for the army. But in the end, the Tsiolkovsky would triumph because it was cheaper to produce and was literally what they were looking for. Therefore, in July of 1962, Tsiolkovsky's victory was announced. They had to convince Robert McNamara, the United States Secretary of Defense at that time, to approve the Sikorsky because he wanted the Chinook, because, according to him, he wanted to foster community among the Army, Air Force, and Navy. But he was convinced just by showing him the inferiority of the Chinook compared to its counterpart in the corresponding task. At that time, there were only models. The Army asked Tsiolkovsky for four prototypes, but after a huge budget cut to the project, Tsiolkovsky could only deliver two units. But despite all these obstacles, the ICH-53A made its first flight on October 14, 1964, and the Navy officers loved it. Fourteen more of these were approved for evaluation, and by November 19, they had received their designation of CH-53, also known as the ACA Stallion, started mass production just in time for deployment to Vietnam. In Vietnam in 67, these air monsters proved their worth, rescuing many more aircraft than their rescue equivalents and doing much more than just carrying cargo. By then, 141 units were already produced, with more to come as many variants would emerge. 
For all armed force components, the Air Force requested the HH-53B and 100 variants for search and rescue. The Army also requested the CH-53C helicopter for general transport purposes. The CH-53500 would also emerge, whose improvements in motorization allowed it to carry more than 55 soldiers, the same amount as the Chinese. But in 68, the Navy requested another sea stallion, this time much more powerful. They needed it to have a lifting capacity 1.8 times greater, that is almost double, which was crazy for the already powerful sea stallion. And besides, it couldn't be bigger because it had to fit on amphibious ships. Interestingly, the Army had made a similar request to Tsiolkovsky a few months earlier, so they were already working on a helicopter to meet this need. Tsiolkovsky's solution was simple. He took the same helicopter, added another engine, and created a more powerful helicopter. McNamara again wanted to deny the project for the same previous reason, but the Navy and the Marines managed to convince him again, and thus the CH-53E Super Stallion was born. For the final model, Tsiolkovsky made notable changes, among which would be the tail in general. This time it was in a much higher position and had the rotor tilted at 30 degrees. This curious feature was added because in hover flight, the helicopter tilted its nose upwards, which made it difficult to control the landing. Tilting the rotor allowed the helicopter to have a little extra boost in hover flight to correct this problem. In addition, when it was in this position, the powerful engines caused it to have a quite problematic torque effect, that is, it spun on itself in hover flight. Having the rotor tilted allowed it to completely counteract this effect. We also saw a similar feature in the UH-60 Blackhawks, which were designed alongside the Super Stallions. But this time they are tilted downwards to solve similar problems. In this case, the plane had a center of mass tilted backwards, so the downward angled rotor solved this problem. Remember that the first version of the Sea Stallion had only 200 kilometers of autonomy and a maximum load of 3.6 tons. Well, the Super Stallions had a range of 1,000 kilometers and a maximum load of 16 tons. And they could also carry 56 people. Sierkowski made all these improvements to the same helicopter in just 10 years. That was crazy. The Super Stallions were in service until 2015 and participated in all American conflicts at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 2000s. In 2015, they would start to be gradually replaced by the CH-53K King Stallions, and today they are retired. However, there is its successor, so it is not yet the end of the King of Sea and Land Cargo helicopters. If you like this video, you'll probably like this one about the powerful and lethal Beehive ammunition. I highly recommend it. Thank you very much for this video and see you next time.